Shock travel, you need it, but how much and why? Stay tuned, find out. So shock travel, it's extremely important. It's different than your overall suspension travel. A lot of things you need to consider, but we'll walk you through that and make sure that your car is riding and handling the way it should. Damien, what happens if you don't have the right amount of shock travel? Well, if your shock travel's too short or you're topping the shock out, bottoming the shock out, your ride quality is gonna suffer because it's limiting the shock travel. Your performance is gonna be poor, again, because your shock travel is now limiting and upsetting the suspension. And if you're topping out or bottoming out the shocks, you potentially damage the shocks. Um, you know, best case, eventually it could cause internal problems and performance issues. Worst case, it physically breaks the shock. So we want to avoid that. All right, so when you're thinking about shock travel, the things you want to be considered of is what type of suspension system we're working with. Uh, what we have in front of me here, we have a solid axle rear end, a 10 bolt, but very common, like you find a 12 bolt, four nine inch, all your you know, domestic muscle cars pretty much fall in that category. But your suspension travel, the way the axle moves is gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio of how much your shock is gonna move. So if your axle moves up two inches on a bump, your shock is also gonna move two inches. And what you wanna be thinking about is, through its range of motion, how do I not run out of shock travel? Because you never want the shock to be a limiter. Uh, once it goes mechanically solid, that's a good case for which it's either gonna result in a bad ride quality or you might break something. So typically what we recommend is at least two and a half inches of travel, both on compression and then also on rebound as well. If you have more, great, but two and a half is what we recommend for a solid axle. Now, independent suspension, it is different. And Damien, walk us through some of the considerations with us independent front suspension. Sure, so with an independent suspension, we're working with a motion ratio or a lever ratio. And in a generic independent suspension, it's gonna be about a two to one motion ratio. So for every two inches of wheel travel, the shock's only gonna move about one inch. In a case like that, a three inch travel shock is generally the minimum amount of travel that we wanna see there. And that three inch shock, mind you, that's gonna be six inches at the wheel. So that's gonna give you plenty of you know, ride quality and comfort and performance you're looking for out of the car. Now, common questions that we oftentimes get is, you know, I'm building my suspension from scratch. I got a tube chassis set up, or maybe I'm modifying a muscle car and trying to fit coilovers or shocks to it. How much shock travel should I be thinking about when it comes to where I place my mounts and things of that nature? And really the answer for that is, Again, if you think about some of the things that we talked about today on, you know, at least two and a half inches of travel in either direction in the back, if you can get more, great. Um, or again, if you're looking at anywhere in excess of three inches of overall travel for the front, you should be in good shape. So put your mounts where they best fit the chassis, put your mounts um, in an area that's easy to, you know, access the shock and take advantage of adjustable valving or whatever adjustment your shock might have on it, and you'll be just fine. You know, also be thinking about, again, you don't want that shock to be a limiter. So be thinking about your bump stops and different means for which you would prevent shock travel from exceeding what it's designed to do and causing damage to the shock and or, you know, bad ride quality. So for more information about the topic of shock travel and how it affects your car, make sure to check out QA1.net. Full line of shock absorbers there, lifetime warranty on these products, and um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, guys.